Life is being a live stream. Got it. <laughs> Should I introduce myself? Natalie, go for it. Hello, my name is Natalie Carney for CGTN here in the southern uh, Turkish city of Adana, where, of course, uh, CGTN has been covering the horrific earthquake that struck this region at about 4.12 a.m. on Monday morning. Now, this city of Adana uh, is part of one of the 10 provinces that was affected by uh, that 7.8 earthquake and all the aftershocks that have come after it. So we've been going around checking out how the recovery and rescue efforts are going, speaking to those uh, that have been most affected. So I'll go through some of that with you. But at first, I just wanted to explain a little more about where I am. Um, this has been one of the biggest buildings that went down here in the city of Adana. And you can compare it to the building behind it. It was very similar in size and in appearance. And it completely fell. Uh, collapsed during the first earthquake and uh, rescue efforts have been going on uh, essentially since Monday to try to save those lives inside and from what we understand even today four days later uh, there are still about three or four people that are inside the pile of rubble that you see behind me here. Now this four-day mark is a rather critical point in all rescue and recovery efforts. Uh, scientists and those involved in these efforts usually say 72 hours is the critical point in which rescue efforts become recovery efforts. And unfortunately, we have been seeing more and more of that over the last few hours. There have been some stories of survival still a few hours ago. Uh, from what we understand, after 72 hours, or excuse me, 77 hours of being buried under some rubble, I believe it was the city of Gaziantep, a 60-year-old woman was saved. There was also a cat saved after many hours uh, over the last little while. So there are still those rays of hope in all of this, um, but those that are very uh, regularly involved in these circumstances do say that 72 hours is a very critical point where the majority of those pulled out of the rubble uh, are, are usually passed. Now, the city of Adana, just to give you a little bit more about the bearings here, um, 25 buildings in this city, uh, such as this one behind me, came to the ground uh, over the last few days, be it in the initial earthquake or be it in one of the aftershocks. Um, but saying all that, this is one of the cities that has been the least affected. Other cities, such as Karaman Marash, such as Hatay, such as Malatia, has seen far worse devastation. And the challenges in those areas has been particularly the weather. Adana has also benefited, if that's the right word to use, by the warmer temperatures here. Whereas in Malatia, which is a, a few hundred kilometers north of us, temperatures have dropped to minus seven. And why that is so important, because, of course, uh, the colder weather uh, makes these rescue efforts more difficult for those involved in them and also more difficult for those that are still under the rubble, because hypothermia, even if they do survive for a while, hypothermia can, can claim their lives. And also for those that have survived but have no homes left or those whose buildings uh, they don't trust anymore. And, and that's a massive, massive uh, issue now that's causing uh, the World Health Organization to even say there could be a potential of a second, even greater disaster from those that have been living on the streets in these cold weathers as they don't trust the, uh, the structural engineering of their buildings anymore. Uh, they're very, very traumatized by their experiences. It was 4.12 in the morning when people are in their deepest sleeps in their beds, uh, which also is, is, is a reason why we're seeing such great loss of life. There weren't very many people out on the streets um, in open air at that particular time. Uh, I'll show you a bit of the surroundings that we have going on here to give you more of a sense of things. Over here, there's a bonfire. This is where a lot of the rescue workers are, are keeping warm themselves. 
Uh, but this is a very, very um, familiar scene over the last few days here in Adana and again in the colder temperature areas as the people uh, whose buildings no longer exist are sleeping outside. The smell of these bonfires is something that um, I I've come to, to get used to over the last three days that I myself have been in this particular area. And right here behind us, you'll see a big mobile unit from Assad. Assad is Turkey's uh, natural, watch the dog, <laughs> is Turkey's um, disaster management organization. And uh, they've been deployed, of course, across the entire country uh, to, try to try to do what they can uh, to help the people most in need. And on top of that, of course, they're from what we've been told, over 5,000 international organization personnel here um, from different countries that are, uh, are helping in these aid efforts. And here we have another bonfire and uh, people here uh, having something to eat. Merhaba, afiyet olsun, afiyet olsun. Again, people that are, you know, have been forced to live outside, those as well that are just helping in the rescue efforts. Um, everyone seems to be coming together uh, in, in, to help this the horrible situation uh, that the people of Turkey and let's not forget northern Syria have been facing. There have been some Twitter hashtags, be my home, be my guest, uh, Turkish people um, inviting, <laughs> inviting others. To, uh, to, to come to their homes, those that are living in safer areas. Airlines, such as Turkish Airlines, is offering free flights for victims to get to those homes. So there's a lot of community support, people coming out, offering dinners, offering clothing for those that are stuck outside. These aid organizations are trying to build shelters, are trying to build some sort of accommodations, even if they are temporary, to get these people out of the cold, but they cannot be built quick enough, and especially in the numbers that we are seeing. The area that was affected is 500 kilometers in size. That's larger uh, than the country of Germany, for instance. And uh, that, that encompasses about 13 million people. And according to international agencies, such as the World Health Organization, it's going to be 23 million people that are affected by this earthquake. That's a substantial amount uh, of, of resources that are required to get these people back on to their feet and living somewhat uh, of a regular life again. Now, that being said, there has been a lot of criticism about how all this rescue and recovery um, ha has, has panned out, uh, particularly by the, the, the Turkish government. And this is something that even the president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan himself acknowledged yesterday when he visited the, uh, the destroyed, the city hit, uh, Karaman Maraj. And he mentioned to the people there that yes, we did have some challenges at the beginning because nobody can prepare for a disaster of this size. And he also added the, uh, the, the, the weather challenges. That made things more difficult and promised, though, that going forward, that there will be no person left unattended. However, yesterday I was in a province called Hatay. Uh, and in that province, uh, there's a lot of people who are very upset that there hasn't been enough support sent their way. Uh, a lot of people who, who claim that all this uh, aid and, and rescue efforts are being sent to other cities. Uh, in the country. And one reason for that could be the geography of, uh, of this particular province, Hatay. But it leaves these people very uncertain about their future and uh, very uncertain about the capabilities of, of their government as, as they sleep rough. Um, while we were there, we, we came to a, another site where there was you know, more devastation and, and workers working late into the night trying to help us uh, resolve the situation as best they could. And we, we got there at a time when they were pulling out a 34 year old man. His wife had just been pulled out a few hours prior to that. Now these are two people who have their whole lives ahead of them. And now they're just names added to this increasing list of those that have lost their lives. Support workers need pretty much everything, down to water, down to gloves. They need thermal blankets. Um, many, many aid organizations and individual um, civic organizations are uh, doing what they can. 
to support and calling out for things. We're gonna go over here to the, just showing you a little bit more of the scene because there's uh, some quite, quite, quite good imagery here that gives you a sense of, uh, of again, what's happening in Adana, but Adana was not nearly as affected as much as Karaman Marash, as Malatya, as An Antep, Gaziantep and Hatay. So here we have the Turkish Red Crescent and they're handing out food to people who are helping and also those that are sleeping out in the open tonight or sleeping in their cars. So there you have it. I mean, the situation continues. The situation is very, very fluid as, as the numbers of those affected by this increases and as the numbers of those pulled out of the rubble also increases and that's another concern many of these buildings there is fear that thousands could still be underneath them there's still thousands of people who have been unaccounted for who are still considered missing so as this uh catastrophic event continues to unfold cgtn will be here to provide you with the latest information as well as uh, as myself oh i'm sorry just before we cut off i'm just noticing this tent here, yes? There's a tent here. So, look, look. so this is a field hospital, essentially an area where those that have been most affected can come and get, um, get their first sense or source of medical attention uh, here on the grounds. Uh, because of course that's an issue, getting these people to hospitals. A lot of the hospitals in the area have, have have been dilapidated and 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 they just don't have the resources to to accommodate for the thousands of people that have been affected by this there's over 39,000 people that have been injured um it's the latest number that we have been given so it, it's been a very difficult situation they're being driven to other cities other hospitals but some of them need urgent care now and it's these sort of field hospitals here um that provide that urgent care until these ambulances or helicopters can get them to a facility that can uh, give them the proper medical attention that they need. So as I was mentioning there, we are covering this devastating event for you. So please keep tuned to CGTN. We've got several teams across the country, across the disaster area. Uh, so we will provide you with the latest information here on the ground from Turkey. Stay safe. We'll speak to you soon. Thank you.